Hey, hey, what's good, fam? It's your girl, Christy Akins, and you have tuned in to another episode of Southern Chats. Welcome back to all of the Southern Chats family, and also welcome to all of the new subscribers and the new viewers to the show. I welcome you with much love. So, guess what, y'all? We are on episode eight. Yes, episode eight. We are moving right along. We are getting the groundwork out of the way. We're getting all of the the hard stuff, the stuff that you really don't want to talk about. We're going through all of that, getting all of that out of the way. So I just want to, again, thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Any of my supporters, anybody who is watching this, anybody who has shared, liked, comment, whatever you have done to support this positive movement and support this growth, I'm just, I'm thankful for you. And I know some of y'all be like, dang, she do that on every video. Listen, 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 listen. I don't take it lightly at all. I don't take it lightly because you can very much so scroll by this and not even look at it. You can very much so look at it and just be on your way. Get what you need and be done. But to take the time out to actually watch this video and to also take another step to share it, to like, to comment, to send me a text, send an email, whatever you may do, I appreciate it. And I never, ever was taking any of that for granted. So as long as y'all keep doing what y'all doing, I'm gonna keep thanking y'all, okay? I'm going to keep thanking y'all. So I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. All right, now that we got that out the way, um, <laughs> I was laughing, y'all, because I was going through my videos and um, I was like, what episode am I on? And I was like, okay, I'm on episode eight. So, but as I was looking through the videos, listen, why was I looking and I said, my hair has been different each show. <laughs> I was like, okay, now I got a new do now. So, I'm natural, okay? And um, if I don't get my hair, like do a silk out, I'm constantly looking for natural styles, constantly trying to find something to do to my head because I'm natural. And it's a struggle because I have a lot of hair. So yeah, I don't want y'all to be thinking like, she be just, oh, she be doing the most, because I do. I can tend to do the most sometimes, but I literally have to do my hair every week or every other week. It's most of the time every week. But um, yeah. So you'll see some different stuff. So y'all don't mind my head. Please don't mind my head. But you know, comment and let me know if you like it. I did something new. I'm not really, listen, I don't know about this. I got a little, little pony going on with a little twist at the top. I think I'm doing too much. I think I'm doing too much, but y'all let me know if you like it. Let me know if I can pull this off. I'm gonna have to rock it because I done did it. So it is what it is. <laughs> Oh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and get into today's topic. So, y'all, when I tell y'all, when God placed this on my heart, it about just blew my socks off. I was just like, you really want me to talk about that? You really want me to talk about that? God was like, yes. And I was like, okay. Well, lay it on me, and I'm going to just lay it on them. So, you lay it on me, and I'm going to lay it on them, Okay. <laughs> So don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. Pray about it and take it up with God, okay? So today's topic um, that we're going to be discussing is watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. See, I gave it to you three different ways. So, however you can relate to that, grab it and take a seat, okay? Come on in the house. Come on in the house, my sister, my brother, and have a seat. That's why we on the couch today. I need y'all to come have a seat. Come have a seat and come talk. Whew. So, we're going to unfold this today. I have two points that we're just going to talk about um, and unfold this. And as I always tell you all, this is what God has given me. And... Um, I'm just going to give it to you all based off of what God's given me in my opinion. So, 
um, you all just just work with me. Work with me, and we're gonna walk through this together, okay? Because I am going to hold your hand and try to help you grow as I'm growing. And I'm going to be very transparent with you all as I unpack this uh, topic today and let you all know about my past struggles and the things that I've dealt with as well because I don't want y'all thinking that I'm telling you this and I'm looking down on you because that's not the case. Some of the, well, pretty much everything that I've told y'all about so far, I've had to walk through those same money paths. So I understand. I understand and I get it. So don't ever feel like I'm looking down on anybody because everybody's journey, everybody's path is going to be different, okay? So again, the topic is watch your mouth, all right? So as I'm talking about this topic and unfolding this, what do I mean by watch your mouth? It's self-explanatory. Watch what you say. Watch how you say it. And be clear on what you're saying, all right? Watch what you say, watch how you say it, and be clear on what you're saying. This is very powerful. There is power in the tongue. And what we have to understand is, is that words, when they are put out, they, they out there. They are out there. So that's why you have, the Bible says, be slow to speak. You have to be slow to speak so that you can think about what you're going to say before it leaves your mouth. Before it exits the mouth, you need to think about what you're saying. All right? So the first, the first point that I'm going to give as far as watching your mouth is um, talking down talking down on others. So, when I say watch your mouth, I mean watch your mouth. You can't be out here talking reckless to people and talking down on them. My couples, couples, couples. Now listen, we got about two or three episodes, you know, where we talking about, you know, love on your mate, build them up, we're trying to get this relationship thing going. We're, I want to see more marriages. I want to see more happy marriages because there's a lot of marriages, but I need them to be happy. I need them to be happy internal and external, okay? So, um, this is the thing. When you are in a relationship, you have to understand there's going to be good days. There may be bad moments, all right? And in those bad moments that you have, you cannot take those bad moments to tear your mate down. Don't take a disagreement and then turn a disagreement or turn a discussion into a boxing match. And I feel like that's what a lot of couples have done. You all get so accustomed to being around each other and getting to know each other and you know each other like the back of your hand. So when you get into these situations where you have an argument or you have a, a heated moment, it's like it's the it's the battle of who can tear who down first. And that is not how you resolve issues. Because if you already have an issue that's at hand that you're discussing, you taking that issue and also targeting your mate to tear them down and using derogatory words against them you have added more issues to the issue that y'all were already discussing. So now we, we are here talking about, you know, quote unquote, for instance, um, cooking duties. Who needs to cook? Because nobody is cooking. We, we're working so much and I feel like I cook too much. I cook, I cook the most and you don't cook enough. And we need to sit down and talk about this. So the issue is, who cooks the most? Who who not cooking enough? So y'all having this discussion, and then in the middle of discussion, you start bringing up a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, because you got these little boy tendencies, and you do this, you do that, and you're degrading them, and now, because I don't know who the H you talking to, you know, you're going, then this, <laughs> then that, you know, and you're doing all that, 
And then here he come, he like, I don't know who you talking to, and this and that, and he made, listen, some relationships, I, I'm just saying, in some relationships, you know, the man may call the woman to be, I don't know. I don't stand for it. I would not tolerate it. I don't suggest you tolerate it, but I'm saying, this is what, this is why we're having the conversation. Watch your mouth. Don't degrade your mate. Don't talk down on your mate. Don't add more hurt that, that does not need to be added into the situation. If you're already having a discussion, we can sit down and have a, a cool, calm, collective discussion about this. Okay, but babe, honestly, when I get home, um, I'm cooking, it seems like Monday through Friday, and it's kind of wearing on me. Is there any way that you can pick up some days? You know, or if you can't pick up no days, babe, I may have to get some fast food about two days out the week because it's, it's just wearing on me. It's called compromise. It's called talking it out. But when you when we go into conversations accusing somebody of doing something that they we don't even know if they're done, but you just go in automatically accusing. Even if you do have an inkling that they may have done something on purpose, give them the opportunity of saying their side. Give them the floor. Let them talk. Don't just go in with the accusation. Don't go in with, you know, being fly at the mouth and going off. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, this girl here, this lady here, whoo, y'all can ask my exes, baby. Is this the mouth? <laughs> oh, this mouth used to not be nothing, nothing nice, nothing nice. And, um, oh, I can cut. And, you know, that, that's something powerful that as women have. We have the ability to slice into half in the blink of an eye <laughs> we we can do it we can do it and i'm telling you that used to be me in my relationship like because i knew i had the mouth that would tear you down you know so i could do it i could do it i could talk bad i could talk so much mess that you you be ready to just like you know what? I'm, I'm finna come for your eye. I'm finna come for your head. I'm finna come for your dome. <laughs> because my mouth was just so slick. Now I'm a, let me give y'all a truth moment. I am I'm one of those witty people, so I can be very quick on my feet with my responses. I can be very sarcastic. I can be very witty. You know, and some people don't. They don't care for it. They don't like it. But it's it's part of my personality. It's part of who I am. Um, I'm never the one to talk down on a person. I'm never the one to degrade somebody. But I am very, just very, very particular with, with words. So um, I know that about myself. And I know from my last relationship, that was something that I challenged myself with as far as being in my, my single season, um, I wanted to challenge myself in making sure that I'm very cognitive of what I say. You know, making sure that I think about what I say before I say it. Um, knowing, knowing that I have a sarcastic mouth, knowing that um, everybody can't handle that. Everybody cannot handle my sarcastic mouth. And I know that. I am aware of where I was. I was aware that I have a smart mouth. I was aware that uh, I can I can tear you down in a, in a in a way that I can use words to have you feeling like is she talking to me? You know, I knew that about myself because I picked that up from hearing my parents growing up, like when they would have arguments and disagreements. Oh, uh, my mama, uh -huh. my mama could get down. She could get down. 
So I, you know, it's it's a learn, it's a learn habit, you know. And so it wasn't something that I was just sitting over here like, ooh, good one, mama, taking notes. No, it was that that was the environment that I was in. And I'm not saying that my parents um, argue 24-7 day in and day out. No. But what I am saying is, is that it was learned. It was a pattern that was learned. Because I did oftentimes hear them argue. And my mom would be yelling and screaming. My dad would be yelling back at her. So, you know, it was just, it was learned. And a lot of times we are in those environments where we pick that up and we learn that. And then you are accustomed to doing it in your relationship and it's not right. And I knew that. And so I knew once I ended my relationship with my son's father. And that's when I literally, you know, started on my single journey. I, I had to just take ownership of that. And we talked about that before in another video. Take ownership of, you know, the, the parts about you that you know that are not right. That you know you need to change. You have to take complete ownership and say to yourself, okay, this is not right. I'm not getting the results that I want. So I have to change this about me. And I knew that that was one of many things <laughs> that I needed to change. And I did. And so I'm saying that to say that, you know, you can do it. You can do it. I, I know. Okay, let me just say this. The devil is busy and trying to mess up my video. Yeah, I have had to stop like four times, but we gonna get through this. So, moving right along. Um, like I said, just be aware of the things that you need to change um, and how you speak to people especially in your relationships how you speak to your partner is definitely going to be a determining factor on how you all can learn to discuss certain topics and have discussions instead of screen matches and and drag out um knock out <laughs> drag out cussing matches and just degrading each other and and, and bringing up each other's insecurities and stuff like that. Like, I've seen it happen. You know, when you have a small argument, turns into a, I am out for blood. Like, and I'm going to say whatever I need to say to degrade you. Some, some relationships are like that. And those are the relationships that I'm talking about that you really have to look at yourself and say, you know, I can't take criticism. Anytime somebody says that I did something, I am defensive to the max and I'm ready to off with their head. You have to look at that and have to understand like, why am I like that? Why do I internalize everything to be about the other person or take everything so defensive? And then you have to internalize why is that happening and then prepare for a change. Start listening. Before, before, listen to your thoughts, listen to yourself before you say the things you say because one thing about it, when, when it leaves your mouth, you cannot take it back. The only thing you can do is apologize. And we always say you can forgive and forget, but the thing is I can forgive you, but I will never forget it. So that's what we have to understand that, you know, you have to make sure that you are very, 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 very cautious about what you say to people in general and to people that you are in close relationship with. Be, be, be very cautious on what you say because certain things can cut so deep that you can't repair it. You have no choice but to move on because of the damage that you've done by, the, by just the words that you've said. Sometimes that is even worse than cutting somebody doing physical harm the things that you say can pierce far more deeper than a physical cut or a physical um assault to a person and if you take your mind and wrap that around you you can be like wow like how could that happen because the way that our mind processes things it internalizes what a person says and it holds far more onto that than it would an actual, an 
actual assault. Just, just, if you think I'm, if you think I'm playing, like, think about it. You, you can honestly think about what somebody has probably said to you in the second grade. You can remember that. Like, I, I can remember to this day, I can remember when I transferred schools and, uh, it was my first day riding on the bus. And back in the day, I used to have a gap. <laughs> y'all know, those of you that know me, uh, y'all know, baby, my gap was, baby, it was the north to the south, the east to the west, baby, it was, <laughs> it was huge, okay? And so I was on the bus, and you know, kids can be cruel, so I was on the bus, and this boy was like, all the people was like looking at me crazy because it was in the middle of the school year. And the guy was like, uh, look at it. She got them big bug eyes and a teeth all gap. Like he was dogging me out. And y'all, I was new to the school. Didn't my, my siblings were in junior high and high school. So I was there by myself. And that hurt my feelings. But guess what? I'm 32 years old and can remember that like the back of my hand. That happened to me when I was in, what, the third grade? So you mean to tell me from the third grade all the way till I'm 32, I can remember vividly exactly what this boy said to me. Because the words, y'all, the words you know that we have to watch what we say, okay? So that's first and foremost. Watch what you say. Two, how we gonna watch our mouth is profanity no <laughs> oh, cursing okay so just just to be transparent and tell y'all about myself because i don't want y'all thinking that i'm over here talking at the side of my neck okay so um i used to be somewhat like a professional cusser <laughs> like i used to um I don't know, like, I, I just, I did, I don't know how I learned. Well, you know, like I told you, I used to hear my parents bicker and argue. But let me tell y'all, when I got grown and was able to say a word or two, honey, listen, the mouth was fly. The mouth was fly, and your girl was a professional cusser. You hear me? I could give you a whole combo of some stuff. And you'd be like, oh, <laughs> So, I know what it's about. I know what it's like. But I will say for the past two and a half, two and a half years, I have committed myself to a clean mouth. Okay? I do not cuss. I do not cuss. I will say I am not perfect. I have, if I have gotten like very, very heated, I will say in the past two and a half years, I may have uh cussed maybe i get myself three times in two and a half years which, which is i'm gonna say pretty good compared to how the population is living okay because it's like every other word that be coming at me a cuss word you know and i don't look down on nobody because i know where i used to be you know i know that i could i could i could do the thing but I can say now, um, moving forward, I, I don't cuss, but the two words now that my, my next step, because you you should always be evolving. You should always be challenging yourself to, to go to the next level. So now that cussing is not really an issue at all. It ain't no issue. I don't cuss. But now that cussing is not an issue, I'm trying to take it to the next step. So I say, I, I say, um, a lot and I'll I'll use the n-word here and there um in reference like if I'm just casually talking I'll be like you know Negro please I won't say Negro you know I'll say the other word but in elevating um and moving to the next step I have added those two words to my list that I'm not wanting to say anymore so along with the cuss words, I am removing, you know, if I say uh, hell, I, I'm just going to be talking in context of hell, um, you know, and um, the N word, I just, I want to remove it, you know, 
I said it a couple of times around my son and he was like, mama? And you know, I, I don't allow him to say it. So I'm like, you know, I have to lead by example. So if I don't want him to say it, I can't say it. So those two words are um, on my list. And my son holds me accountable because listen, I don't know what it is about, you know, sons and their dads, but his dad could give you a, a whole slew of foul words. And he wouldn't say it. My son wouldn't say a word. But, I mean, the second that I let the H word come out of my mouth or I let the N word, he'd be on me, on my top. Be like, mama? So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but it, but it, it does. It feels good to, to even just have him hold me accountable. And, you know, so that's something that I'm working on. But for the bigger scheme of things, profanity and the cursing um we have to watch our mouth we have to learn new words to use besides cuss words <laughs> new ways of getting our point across besides using foul language um especially when we have kids we're raising in you know, you, you have your little prince here and your, 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 your princess here and we're raising these kids. Well, what are they seeing? What is the model that they're looking at? You know, we we are accustomed to what, what we see and what we are around. And just like I told y'all, I was I saw my parents argue. So when I got my professional cousin, because how my mama used to go out when, when her lid came out, baby, my mama was a bad mama jammer. So I learned it, you know, just about from what I saw. So we 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 want our kids to be the best that they can be when they grow up and get grown and, and get out of our homes. But what are we really showing our kids? What are we really modeling in front of them? And so you have to be very just, you just have to be real. Oh my goodness, this is like the seventh time of me starting over. Oh, let me hurry up and wrap this. Let me wrap this up. Even though I had talked about so much and we, we have gotten a lot of stuff out in the open, I hope that this video can help somebody understand the two things that we really have to do to watch our mouth and that is you know not talking down on people not being derogatory and tearing people down with how we talk to them and two is the foul language let's work on scaling back and i keep telling y'all it's not gonna happen overnight I told y'all it's been two and a half years for me and I've, I've slipped up about three times in those two and a half years. You know, so it's a process. It's, you know, when I slipped up, I didn't say, oh, I cussed today. Well, oh well, it's back to the old Christy. No, I slipped up and I said, okay, I have to, okay. Let me just make sure I check my temper. Let me make sure I don't even get myself that upset to the point that I have to even go there with my words. So, it's, it's being holding yourself accountable, making sure that you are setting boundaries, and making sure that you are aware of your temper. If you can feel your blood boiling, okay, remove yourself. Remove yourself so that you don't go to that foul language or using those foul words and you know whatever whatever the case may be. But trying to put yourself in environments where you can communicate communicate and have discussions about things to the point that you don't feel the need to go off or go to the go to the very edge um so let's work on that let's work on that um also let me get your feedback how do you feel about that how do you think that you can go into this next level how do you think that this process will be for you how do you think it will be very hard are you already working on this or is this something where you're like man that's a bit much that's a bit much for me to bite off right now but i'm gonna take a baby step 
you know, you could just take it one cuss word at a time. If you're trying to scale back on the profanity and stuff like that, just take it one cuss word at a time. Maybe you use the B word all the time. So maybe you, okay, well, I'm going to start with the B word. Then I'm going to move on to the next word, okay? It, it does not matter. Let me tell y'all, there's no blueprint for how you start your process. Just start it. Okay, guys, since my phone wants to continue to trip, I'm going to just have to finish up here and just give y'all a quick little goodbye message. <laughs> <laughs> so you all know how you can follow me uh capture this llc on all platforms uh snapchat twitter facebook and instagram please follow the capture this movement we are doing a positive movement and we are going forward okay um i have a lot of great things in store to come so please stay tuned to the pages if you are following we will be moving forward with a lot of great things. Hey, hey, I also want you all to remember to send all of your sting mail to capture this LLC at gmail.com. As you all know, that sting mail is going to be any of your love letters that you want to send, anything positive that you want to say about the show, anything positive you want to say about me. Um, if you have questions, if you have something that you want me to speak about, on the next episode send that to the email address also if you um need coaching and you want to set up some some coaching times and see about the availability that i have send that to capture this llc at gmail.com hey i thank you all so much for tuning in i thank you all for watching and i thank you all for joining me in this movement with positivity and uplifting each other. I will hold your hand as you hold mine and we can walk together. I love you all. I hope that you all have a great weekend. Until the next episode, you all be blessed, be positive, be you. Signing out. Bye.